My name's John Pountney. I'm a photographer and I also run a recording studio and art space in Cardiff. That is um, Baltic House because the building outside has been demolished now. And uh, you know, all these guys are dead now, aren't they? He's grand though. Look at his trousers. Like Peter. Looks like Peter Cook. Um, but this, uh, this guy's still alive. I found him online because it's got his name on. And this guy is as well. So I'm going to try and contact them and see if I can photograph them now. But look at that. Naval ADC to the Queen and Lord Mayor of Cardiff. So he's quite a, you know, powerful guy. And then this guy was the School of Maritime Studies. But that doesn't exist at all now, does it? The uh, project is called Cardiff Before Cardiff. Um, the name was the first name that I came up with and uh, it stuck. The Cardiff before is is the Cardiff in, in the photos, which is, is a completely different uh, place um, in terms of community spirit. Um, and that, that vibe comes, you know, flooding out the pictures. Um, and I, I don't know if I f perhaps prefer the earlier Cardiff to, to the later Cardiff or, or the contemporary to now Cardiff, which, you know, favours um, style over substance, possibly. Um, and, and that's what the title is, is about, really. It's about the Cardiff, which um, was a kind of honest working class city, um, as, as opposed to this kind of uh, capital city now that, that feels it has to project itself. Um, the pictures were found in the, the building we're in now, Warwick Hall. Um, they were taken by uh, a guy that used to work here, Keith S. Robertson, who um, was a, a photographer that worked in and around Cardiff and Penarth in the 80s. Um, um, Keith had spent time um, working abroad. Um, he came back to uh, Britain, and on my understanding, he pretty much gave up photography. Um, he worked in this building for a while, um, and then he became a taxi driver, um, leaving the stuff, obviously, in this building. When I uh, became a tenant in the building, um, uh, summer last year, um, it, it didn't look as good as it looks now. And in the process of that, you know, clearing out rooms full of rubbish and all that kind of thing, just came across the photos in, in fits and starts across the building. Um, the negatives were in the loft. There were some prints in different rooms. Um, and obviously people, you know, previous tenants had looked through them and then just left them there and put something on top of them and, and they'd been forgotten. I was just amazed at, A, how much stuff there was, uh, well, I was amazed at the quality of it, firstly, um, because you look at the quality and then you think about the quantity and you think how he's managed to maintain a level of quality through the amount of prints that there are. I mean, you've seen the, the, the amount of prints today. There's, there's perhaps 250 prints. There's perhaps a 1,000 single frames in the negatives. Um, and I was just flabbergasted. I mean, he, he's done an amazing job. Um, and it reopened my eyes to, to, you know, black and white photography. Just made me think, wow, um, I've got to publicise this stuff so that people see it, because otherwise it's just going to sit in a corner gathering dust for another 25 years. I mean, the pictures were taken in 1983, so it, actually it's nearly 30 years. Um, and if I didn't do something about it, then, then that's where they were going to stay. That's in Splot. This has got massive um, shutters over it now, a big gate. Uh, well, this one was really sad. This lady has now got dementia and she's in a home. Her, her son got in touch with me. Um, this lady was called Winnie Fish. Um, but the guy was like, oh, I opened the paper and my, I saw my mother in there and I've never seen a photo of her before in my life. Which is absolutely bonkers, isn't it? People can get involved by um, going to the Tumblr, which is cardiffbeforecardiff.tumblr.com um, to see the pictures, obviously. 
Uh, and then they can email me via there to tell me if they know people from there. Um, after that, where it goes, I'm not sure at the moment. Um, I think that it should be a book. Uh, and I think that it, sh it hopefully at some point it's going to be a, a, a physical uh, photographic exhibition um, because of the quality of, of Keith's prints. Um, they just, you know, deserve to be seen in public. Uh, and it's life after that. I don't know, you know, hopefully um, it will go to somewhere in Cardiff to be um, looked after and cherished because it's, I don't see it as my property uh, or, the, or the property of, of uh, Ram Jam, the company that runs Warwick Hall. I think it should go somewhere in Cardiff and become part of a Cardiff archive if, if such a thing exists. Um, but for the, for the meantime, I'm going to be going through the, the negatives, the unseen aspect of, of Keith's work, scanning the negatives and then putting those online for as long as I can possibly bear. Because <laughs> there's an awful lot of scanning to do. Um, so, I mean, yes, people keep looking because there's probably another thousand or so images yet to come. Um, and, and like we've just discussed, discussed, it's not a case of one or two great images and then a load of rubbish. It's, they're all of a quality and if they're not of a quality now, they're, they're of an interest because of the, of the time that's elapsed between uh, Keith taking the pictures and, and, you know, looking at them today. It's, it's a case of what Keith, as he looked through his contact sheet, might have thought, no, 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 not interesting. Now, 30 years later, uh, he couldn't possibly predict what what becomes interesting to, to someone in 2011. So obviously all of the images in, uh, now have importance and interest. Um, and, and with Keith's pictures, there's always, you know, the, the great light and, and an amazing composition and subject matter. So it's a case of just going through and doing the whole lot and... and putting them out there for people to see um, and, and that's what the exhibition in the world's millennium center is all about so uh, happy days <laughs>